So once you are able to develop this understanding uh, and appreciation of this fundamental uh, sort of disparity between appearance and reality, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, you will be able to understand that underlying many of our strong emotions, emotional responses towards events and situations, there is an assumption of some kind of existence of an independently existing reality out there. And this will give you an, an insight into uh, sort of various uh, functions of the mind and the dif uh, uh, different types of uh, conscious, uh, sort of levels of consciousness that exist within you. And also to understand that certain types of uh, uh, sort of uh, cognitive events or mental states or emotional states, although they may seem so real and uh, the, the objects appear to them so vivid, but in reality they are uh, mere illusions. And. No, so, um, so you, um, to carry on with the uh, translation of an earlier uh, statement, um, so if you are able to um, uh, develop this understanding that uh, within your own uh, mental states and emotional states, there are certain states which may seem very real and which may seem to be relating to objects which seem so real and vivid to you, but um, in reality, these are uh, states of illusions that what the objects that they relate to do not really exist. So through that way, we will be able to gain an insight into uh, you know, what in Buddha, technical Buddhist language is called the origin of suffering. These afflictive emotional uh, experiences or emotional states that lead to uh, confusion, uh, misapprehension, and then uh, <coughs> which afflicts the mind. And when this is combined with... Uh, understanding of this uh, you know, interdependent nature of reality at the most subtle, subtle level, then we will also gain insight into what in technical Buddhist language is called the, the, the empty nature of reality, the emptiness of all things and events, how uh, each and every object and events uh, uh, lack uh, an intrinsic or independent uh, reality, that they come into being only uh, purely as a result of uh, aggregation of many factors, that, they, 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 that they do not possess uh, existence or identity that is independent or autonomous. So once you uh, gain insight into that uh, emptiness, then of course you will be also able to understand that uh, any apprehensions that uh, uh, conceive reality in the contrary way, that things exist uh, intrinsically, that things exist independently, uh, and then you will uh, know that these uh, apprehensions are uh, uh, d uh, sort of uh, 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 misapprehensions. These are misconceptions uh, pertaining to the nature of reality. And then you will also realize that they have no valid uh, grounding, uh, either in reality nor in your own valid experiences. Whereas uh, the empty nature of reality has a valid grounding both in reason and also in your own experience. Through that way, you will be able to understand, um, appreciate the possibility of uh, arriving at a, a state of knowledge where uh, you um, can uh, uh, sort of conceive the possibility of eliminating that uh, misapprehension uh, sort of completely. And that is the state of cessation. So the point is that by developing a deep, understand, profound understanding of the principle of dependent origination, you can understand both 
the the uh, the truth about the origin of suffering, and also uh, uh, subtle uh, uh, suffering, uh, subtle origins of the suffering, and also uh, uh, um, the truth of cessation. So this is the meaning of the statement that by understanding or by seeing independent origination, you see the Dharma. That Dharma chukunjo, gualam chukunjo ni budeta tongtu hai toh. So through this way, you can see uh, the truth of the cessation and the path that leads to that cessation. Tindegita gualam kudu be chedi ah the yong si bisheisha samar chedi. Tindegita thong yudu zane oh any pakbe kini yuda. So once uh, through this understanding, so once so uh, once you understand um, uh, the truth about the path and also the cessation that the path leads to, then of course then you will be able to conceive the possibility of uh, Sangha members who would have realized and actualized these states and also Buddhas who would have perfected in these uh, states and these experiences. So this is the, the, to sum up, this is the meaning of the Buddha's statement that by uh, Understanding the principles of uh, dependent origination in causal terms, in terms of causal dependence, you understand the law of the karma, uh, the causal principles that operates fundamentally in reality. And also, by complementing that understanding of causal principle with understanding of dependent origination at a much subtler level, then you uh, understand the nature of dharma, you know, in terms of... Uh, a cessation and the paths that lead to the cessation, and once you have gained understanding of uh, cessation and the path, then you also gain an understanding of what Tathagata means or what the Buddha means. So today in this one, Denshi Namsha Shivala, Denyi Namsha, Denshi Namsha, Chamu Shivala, Denyi Namsha Shivala Shivala. So therefore, I feel that. Um, in order to develop uh, a profound understanding or comprehensive understanding of the Four Noble Truths, I think it is uh, uh, necessary to have understanding of the two truths. Any um, therefore, uh, Chandrakirti uh, says in his Prashnapada, uh, clear words, um, he states that um, uh, if one can appreciate uh, the, the, the principle of emptiness, um, the doctrine of emptiness, if one can posit emptiness, then one can posit uh, the interdependent world, the world of interdependent uh, origination. If one can posit that, then one can posit uh, the causality, the, co the causal relationship between suffering and its origin. And once one can accept the causal relationship between the suffering and uh, its origin, then one can also uh, conceive and accept uh, the possibility of its cessation. If one can do that, then one can also accept the possibility of individuals, Sangha members who have realized and actualized these states. If one can do that, then of course one can also conceive Buddhas who have perfected these uh, states of cessation. Mm -hmm. 
So this is how um, uh, one can uh, appreciate the Buddhist, uh, fundamental Buddhist doctrines of the true truths. Uh, it is from the understanding of our phenomenal world of experience and everyday world of uh, lived uh, world of experience that one can appreciate uh, what is known as the world of samvritti satya, the world of uh, um, um, conventional reality, um, where causal principle operates. Once you can accept that, then you can also accept uh, the fundamental underlying reality, the empty nature of that world, which, according to Buddhism, is the ultimate truth, the uh, Paramartha Satya. And, uh, um, and here we can see a kind of a relationship between the two uh, uh, aspects of reality, um, because the, the world of appearance is used not so much as a contrast or an oppositional world to the world of uh, ultimate uh, truth, but rather it is used as the very evidence or the very uh, uh, basis, grounds on which the ultimate nature of reality is ex accepted. Uh, once you can uh, understand the relationship and the nature of these two truths, the world of conventional reality and the ultimate truth, then one is in a good position to uh, fully understand uh, the, the meaning of the Four Noble Truths taught in the scriptures. Um, once you can uh, understand the Four Noble Truths, then you, can, you have laid a, a profound foundation to, to develop a good understanding of what is meant by uh, taking refuge in the Three Jewels. <coughs> So when I speak about two truths, uh, I'm, you must uh, keep in mind that I'm speaking from the perspectives of the Madhyamaka school, the middle way school of um, Buddhism. Of course, the very, the very term, two truths, uh, is used, uh, is, is not something that is confined to this school alone. Uh, you, find, you can find the concept of two truths in other Buddhist schools of thought, such as Vaibhashika, Swatrantika, and Chittamatra as well. And also we can find uh, the, this concept of true truths um, in, in non-Buddhist philosophical schools as well. Uh, now the question is, uh, why Four Noble Truths? Um, why do they exist? And why did the Buddha uh, teach uh, the Four Noble Truths? And now here we must relate that to our own uh, experience as an individual human being. Um, it is a fact, it's a natural fact of existence that we all as individuals possess this innate desire to seek happiness and to overcome, to seek to overcome suffering. And that is a fact of our, fact of our natural sort of uh, existence. And, um, and this is something that is very instinctual and innate. And no need, it does not need any validation or justifications for its existence. Uh, just as it is a natural uh, sort of instinctual kind of desire, so do each of us have the right to fulfill that aspiration. Of course, suffering is that something everybody uh, wishes to avoid. And we also have the right to try to overcome that suffering. Happiness is something that we all aspire to achieve. And of course, we have a right to fulfill that aspiration to attain happiness. Good in your moon, you're doing the need to get about the Kunjo Damaso. 